All right, it's that time of the week. It's three to see. We're talking a little football. We each pick a game from high school, college, and pro for you to watch out for this weekend. And let's get started like we do every week with the high school ranks. What game are you most looking forward to this week, Manny? All right, looking forward to, um, you know, La Vega, they're looking to defend their uh, you know, state title. They're playing host to China Spring now. I think that China Spring, they're having an incredible season. Um, if someone's going to give them a run for their money in the district, it will be China Spring. And uh, you know, it's interesting because they only have one um, similar opponent that they've faced. And, um, Stephenville and uh, you know China Spring ended up losing 21 nothing and uh, however you know La Vega ended up beating them you know handedly so um, it'll be interesting to see which team uh, you know I think it can be it's going to be a real tell potentially of who you know can be the sole you know taker of the division. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a fun district race to watch and uh, see how everything shapes up there. La Vega obviously looks like a machine that can't be stopped right now after what they did to Stephenville. So, yeah, that'll certainly be a fun game. I'm, I'm going to go down in the, in the smaller school rankings. I, you know, anchoring the show every Friday night, it's tough for me to get far away from the station to watch some of these games. So I tell you what, I am so excited to see this San Saba Armadillo team come down to Valley Mills, see what they have. This team is a picture of domination, like what we've seen from Mart in years past. Uh, San Saba is doing that at 2A Division I. They're winning their games by an average of over 58 points a game. So that, that, is, that is domination on offense, domination on defense. And they're taking on a Valley Mills team that is in the hunt for one of those playoff spots. You know, they lost to Crawford a couple weeks ago, but Crawford's a good football team. Valley Mills is a good football team. So we'll see what they have in store. But uh, we'll see what the Armadillos have in store, uh, not only this week, but moving forward as they try to get into the playoffs and then obviously further into that state championship battle. So who do you think's uh, taking home your game on Friday night? I'm going with La Vega. Um, I think it's going to be a very close game. I think uh, the Cougars are definitely going to put up a really good fight, uh, but I think it's going to come down to maybe one score or so. But I mean, La Vega, they just have an incredibly talented, you know, two strong running backs. Um, they are very stacked overall, so I'm, I'm yeah. taking the Pirates. Yeah, the that's Pirates. that's a good pick. Always pick the Pirates that went in doubt. Uh, I, I'm going to go, you know, La Vega's been dominating this year. I'm going to go with San Saba. They've certainly had their share of domination this year. They have a defense. Defense travels. Valley Mills is a good team, but uh, I don't think that they have what it takes to slow down San Saba. So I'm, I'm excited to see it, but I think the Armadillos are going to come away with the win on uh, Friday night. So let's go and turn our attention to Saturday. College slate. Baylor's off this week. So what, what are you watching? All right, I am very excited to see Texas against TCU. Now we know Texas, they almost lost to Kansas this past weekend. You know, the last, you know, the last second field goal pushed them over to, to a win by uh, two points. And, uh, you know, that was a very surprising game. I mean, a lot of people thought that Texas was going to go in, you know, blow them away. And yeah. so basically, you know, TCU ended up, you know, beating uh, Kansas, you know, in their matchup. And uh, basically it, it'll be either a chance for Sam Ellinger and Tom Herman to, you know, bounce back from that game last week and say, okay, you know, you know, maybe it was just a fluke. They weren't, you know, their defense obviously has been um, a little, you know, less than, uh, less Bad than, yeah, Bad yeah. <laughs> Awful. Uh, yeah, but I think it'll, um, you know, it's, it, it's going to go obviously either one of two ways, but I think, uh, and the Longhorns, they're favored by a point and a half. So, you know, that, you know, the people in Vegas, they're, they're thinking it's going to be yeah. a close game as well. Um, but, you know, TCU, I mean, uh, you know, Max Dugan, he's, uh, he's an extreme dual threat. And, uh, you know, Texas last weekend uh, to Kansas, they gave up over 300 passing yards and uh, over 200 rushing yards. So, I mean, I think if, you know, TCU ends up getting their offense, like, really going, I mean, it can be another troublesome game. Yeah, it's uh, been the issue for them all year is they really have not been able to get that offense going consistently. I think the one yes. thing that we do know is TCU has already taken one huge L so far this week, and that is the uniforms. If you've not seen them, yeah. they're there's a, video, a picture of them. They are absolutely disgusting. So uh, you don't want uh, don't want any part of, uh, of those uniforms. I'm going to go in the SEC. I'm going to be down in College Station for A&M and Mississippi State, obviously. But uh, I'm going to I've got my eyes in Baton Rouge on LSU. Okay. You know they've got Alabama in two weeks. Everyone's anticipating that game. But I've just been so impressed with LSU all season long. They've got the offense, their defense. You know, they struggled with tackling when they played Texas. They seem to have kind of gotten back on track a little bit. That LSU crowd is going to be fired up. I know some yeah. of those comments from Bo Nix got taken out of context a little bit. And, uh, you know, but LSU fans don't need a reason to get fired up, especially when Auburn comes to town. These two teams are, are very, uh, you know, this rivalry is one of those where something always happens and it seems yeah. like a close game. So uh, I was there for 
for a couple of those rivalry games. And, and something weird always happens between Auburn and LSU. And I know that a lot of the LSU fans, you know, they're kind of starting to feel like, hey, this is our year. This is the year we finally beat Alabama. And it has been a long time since they have, dating back to 2011. So, you know, they, they have that bye week before Bama. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they focus all their attention on Auburn this weekend. Joe Burrow is going to keep rolling. I think right now he's my favorite to win the Heisman Trophy the way that he's orchestrated that offense in that new look LSU Tiger offense that uh, I saw no sign of in my time in Baton Rouge. So things have certainly changed a little bit down there. But yeah, Auburn LSU is always fun. And then of course we get ready for uh, Auburn or Alabama LSU in two weeks. So uh, who are you going with in your game? All right, I'm, I'm going with uh, the Longhorns. I just think that you know they're more of uh, they're more of a fine-tuned team. They're a lot more talented, of course, than TCU. I mean, um, it's uh, you know not everyone team can be 100 percent every you know every single weekend. And obviously, I think they're going to fix a lot of those mistakes they made against Kansas. Um, but it'll be a good fight. But I'm taking the yeah. Longhorns. Yeah, what about you? yeah. I mean, I mean, your game it's a quarterback league, and if you got Max Duggan and Sam Ellinger. Sam Ellinger every, every, every day of the week. So we'll, I think Texas will win there. But I also think LSU is going to win uh, at Auburn. Like I said, it's, it's, I think it, it's a 10 to 12 point game. 10 to 12 point favorite LSU is. They're at home. That crowd is going to be revved up. You know, they're feeling it right now. They're rolling. Uh, Auburn is good. You know, we saw them in College Station a couple weeks ago. They're, they're a good football team. So I think it's going to be close. I think Auburn will, you know, beat that point spread. I think they'll keep it that close. But in the end, LSU wins. And then we get two weeks to start talking about Alabama and LSU. So certainly going to be yeah. a fun matchup there. Looking forward to a big day on Saturday. Then, of course, Sunday, we've got our NFL slate. What are you looking for? All right. Packers on the road playing the Chiefs. Uh, Aaron Rodgers coming off the best game in his career. Five touchdowns, a perfect quarterback rating. You know, going to Arrowhead now, you know, Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes uh, with that uh, injury, dislocating his kneecap. And so, you know, Matt Moore, when he went in and uh, played, you know, replaced him, I think that he did pretty well. I mean, when you have Travis Kelsey, you know, um, uh, Tyree Kill and, uh, you know, Shady McCoy, I mean, your offense is bound to have success. But... The interesting kicker part of it is, is that yesterday Mahomes was out taken. He was out on the on the field practicing, yeah. and he looked. I mean, um, so it could be. You know, there, I wouldn't be surprised if, for some crazy reason, if he is. You know, if he ends up playing in that game, I mean, of course he will be limited. Yeah. Um, but um, so you know. And taking a look at the Packers, uh, their O-line is, you know, is, is phenomenal. If you look at Aaron Rodgers, he has so much time back there in the pocket. Um, and so, and uh, they'll be going up against the Chiefs, uh, you know, uh, front seven. They got nine sacks this past weekend against the Broncos. Uh, you know, yeah. sacked Flacco nine times. Yeah. But their O-line, Broncos are, you know. It's terrible. They're, yeah, they're yeah. not one of the, you know, they're, they're not a great uh, You know, Flacco's a statue back there. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's, that's a tough game for him. But, yeah, that, that certainly should be fun. And, and seeing Patrick Mahomes play at Texas Tech for all those years that I did, he played a lot of games where he was not 100%. So, dude's a warrior, and, and if anyone's oh, yeah. going to get out there, I think it's going to be, I think he'll, he'll find a way to get his way on the field and, and battle his uh, state farm buddy and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that would be, yeah. His commercials are the worst. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of a... Feels like a little bit of a weaker slate this week in the NFL. Your game, obviously, going to be a very good one on Sunday night. You know, I, I look at what I want to see this weekend, and I am watching, I know it's the Steelers and the winless Dolphins, but I want, I'm not necessarily looking for the, the great game. I want to see what Mason Rudolph can do. I, I, there's been this promise, and, mm -hmm. you know, in the Ravens game, it looked like maybe he was starting to get a little something yeah. going, maybe starting to push that football down the field a little bit. And I really want to see this game to find out what Mason Rudolph has and to see if he can really stretch the field like he did at Oklahoma State, you know, get make some plays down the field with those receivers that he has that, that can make some plays down there for him. They're missing James Washington, which is going to be tough because he's a big combat catch guy. So uh, I want to see, I saw Mason last week in, in Stillwater with, at Oklahoma State, and I want to see if he can do what he used to do at Oklahoma State. And if he can, if he's going to do it against anyone, it's got to be the Dolphins oh, <laughs> because yeah. it is the NFL, it is crazy, and the Steelers are in no position to take anybody lightly. But the Dolphins are historically bad. So tanking for Tua in full progress. So we'll see what happens there. I, I, I've been a believer in Mason Rudolph, and I just want to see what we saw in the Big 12, if that can translate to the NFL. So mm -hmm. should be a fun one uh, there on Monday night. But the Sunday nighter, who are you taking in that one? I'm going to go with the Packers on this one. Um, you know, it's, uh, of course, they're playing in Arrowhead. But if you look at some of the numbers, you know, traditionally, um, you know, the Chiefs is, 
there is that home field advantage, but um, you know, it's like in, I think it was like in the playoffs, they only have around you know th like three wins or, or something like that uh, since the Mahomes era, even though he hasn't been around yeah. like too too long. Right, um, right. But I just think that you know Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, they're playing so well right now, and it's like you can put any receiver out there, and, and, yeah. and as long as you give Rodgers time, I mean, he can just throw dimes all day long. Um, and oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. So you know, if Mahomes is in, uh, he's not going to be 100%. He's not going to going to be as mobile. But um, I'm definitely excited for that game. And yeah. taking the Packers, though. Yeah, I mean, the Chiefs have lost two in a row at Arrowhead too. That's that's the other exactly. strange thing and, and kind of disappointing thing for Chiefs fans. So you know, they'll be in full freakout mode uh, if they do drop that one. And uh, you know, I, I think they just need to let Pat get healthy and, and kind of get rested again. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm taking, in my game, the other Big 12 quarterback that I'm keeping an eye on, Mason Rudolph. I do think the Steelers do get the win. You know, it's on Monday night. It's at Heinz Field. I think the last time the Steelers lost on Monday night at Heinz Field was 1991, mm -hmm. something like that, somewhere around there. So Mike Tomlin and the Steelers don't usually lose on Monday night. Now that I've said that, I'm sure I've jinxed them. Uh, but it is the Dolphins, and the last time these met on, on Monday night football, it was an ugly game. So. Uh, we'll see what happens there, but uh, yeah, I think I, I feel like I got to take the Steelers. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's going to be a show. I mean, Sunday night and Monday night. And yeah. uh, if, you know, if you are looking for a nice place to watch the game, get some nice wings. Dancing Bear Pub, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, these whew, yeah. these wings are to die for. Melt in your mouth and the French fries. They uh, these actually remind me of uh, on the East Coast. We have it's called Thrasher fries or Boardwalk fries. If uh, right. they're world famous on the East Coast, <laughs> but these are just like them. Yeah, so. they look they look delicious. Come down here. They got some my favorite thing. The uh, the beer taps on the wall. Looks like plenty of those to come down here and try. So, uh, you know, Baylor's out of town. We've got some good football games on. Come down here, hang out, have some good food, some good drinks. You know, maybe you'll bump into one of us down here at some point. I'm sure you will. <laughs> but uh, this has been 3 to C. We'll see you guys again next week.